And during this truly pivotal time, we have these two major transformations that we're facing. One with uh, macroeconomic shifts largely driven by technology, and the second is climate change. Now couple that with largely stagnant institutions that are struggling to keep up, and we have a recipe for a very difficult situation. Some estimates put unemployment over the coming 10, 15 years at around 50%, plus increasing challenges related to dramatically increasing underemployment. Now imagine for just a moment, our cities, our countries, our communities, our families with 50% unemployment, and with many others not actually satisfied with what they're doing with work. At the same time, we live in a world that is incredibly unequal, with inequality rising. The technology that is driving disruptions around the world are largely coming from a very small number of people around the world, largely men, and the, the top 10 leading innovation ecosystems globally harness more technology, more power than the entire rest of the world combined. And this amount is actually increasing. Even though technology hubs are, in, are, are, are sprouting up around the world, this imbalance is actually increasing. These innovation hubs are still growing faster. And one of the challenges is that what is driving that sort of innovation and growth in these innovation ecosystems, these leading hubs, is not human well-being. It is wealth accumulation the fastest possible by any means necessary. Laws that were designed to protect our communities are seen as hurdles to overcome, not as will to abide by. It reminds me a lot of this map. Now imagine this perfect storm. Imagine for a second. Massive economic shifts and disruptions leading to a uh, heavy decline of, unemployment, of employment, coupled with potentially mass extinction of companies due to these economic shifts in climate change, decreasing state revenues, increasing unemployment and underemployment, coupled with various challenges related to water, energy, education, food security, etc. I am blessed and cursed with a very vivid imagination, and I regularly have visions of countries collapsing. Literally, state failure. Total loss of state viability. And I see this as the trajectory that many countries are on, not just developing countries, but also some developed countries as well. If we ever want to achieve these, we need to dramatically change our approach, our scale, and how we work with each other. Now, I um, uh, have been working around the region uh, for over 10 years. I don't, maybe I don't look that old, but I have a background in education, policy, and entrepreneurship going back almost 25 years. And together with my colleagues who also have experience working and supporting entrepreneurship around the Middle East for uh, decades, is we realized um, uh, over the last period, over the last 10 years of working to support entrepreneurship and innovation communities around the region, was that our approaches and our collective approaches were broken. We need to change how we work on these efforts, how we conceive of innovation ecosystems, the diversity and the complexity, but also the beauty of what these communities can deliver, and as well, the incredibly important role of the public sector. There is no innovation ecosystem that exists in the world today that does not have massive sustained support from the public sector. At the same time, the complexity and the beauty of what it means to be an entrepreneur. The soup of soft skills and hard skills that it takes to build these enterprises. But very interesting as well is this is also what companies need. Companies around the world are struggling to find people with this entrepreneurial skill set. So what do we do? I'm a, a couple years ago, realizing the uh, depth of these challenges, um, uh, my colleague uh, Bilal and I set out with these challenges ahead of us. Can we come up with a solution that addresses these four challenges? First off, that massively expands reach 
to entrepreneurial education, thinking not just thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds, hundreds of thousands, but millions and hundreds of millions of people, while at the same time improving the diversity of engagement. So it has to engage people across a broader geography and underrepresented groups, especially women, youth, migrants, refugees, and people who are outside of these top 10 or 20 innovation hubs globally. Number three, nothing less than world-class quality will do. Think the best of the best of Silicon Valley, of London, of Boston, and that wherever you are. And the fourth challenge was that this all, this all had to be delivered at a massively lower price point per impact, whatever your impact is, if your goal is jobs or skills development, etc. Massively lower price point. And so our solution after um, the various iterations and testing is pitchworthy. So as an example of what we do, uh, just recently we ran a program with a government agency and a telecom partner. We had around 240 applications, and even before the first filtration process, we started engaging um, this group of people in high quality activities, connecting with experts, peer-to-peer -peer learning activities, building those soft skills, uh, even before there was any sort of uh, selection process. We then selected 65 for a one-week sprint, selected 20 to come to a, uh, to, to a one-day um, workshop and, and semi-finals uh, session, and then selected 13 for a four-month accelerator. The most exciting part about this, though, is that over the five-month period, we only physically met these people twice. Instead, we used a, a, an array of communication tools and the control platform. So Pitchworthy includes two main components. One of them is a team productivity tool that helps teams set milestones, goals, and tasks, plus team, team and project uh, activities, such as key learning, engaging mentors, collecting external feedback, etc. cetera. Uh, we're using a lot of research, plus productivity best practices from leading global tech companies. But instead of just teaching these, it's actually just baked into the platform. So however people are uh, uh, using the platform, they're already learning and benefiting and building those habits of those successful tech companies and then building them into their own lives. There's also a productivity tool for programs. And so with programs, they can be managing cohorts of teams, large groups, seeing over, overviews of all of the teams, plus um, uh, having curriculum up, uh, uh, suggesting activities, overseeing mentor communications, and more. We're also using a suite of uh, psychometric tools that we call the MDAC, the Multidisciplinary Assessment Quiz. And through this, we can assess and actually measure and quantify soft skills, startup skills, and startup progress. And through this, we can then deliver customized training, um, uh, leveraging a database. We have a database of around 800 activities that both improve soft skills development and startup development. And so part of our goal with this is while a normal classroom of 20 people or an accelerator of 10 teams, the teacher is teaching to the average of the class, through this, our goal is that we can help teachers and mentors and trainers deliver training to 50 or 100 or 500 learners in every one of them having a personalized learning experience. So our, we're building on pedagogy here and building these into the tool. Um, uh, there's various options for how teams and, and partners can engage. First of all, we're building this as a freemium tool for teams to make it very accessible to learners around the world. And for programs, can range from very, very affordable, simple SaaS solution, software as a service, to a fully managed program solution. And a key part of our effort here is around enabling others. So like platforms like YouTube or Wikipedia or Facebook, how these work is that every additional user creates value for the program the users as a whole. And through this, um, I, I'm going to skip past this here, um, we're trying to have much greater efficiency. We're currently running programs that are quantifiably higher quality, lower uh, cost for larger numbers of people. But through this, we can actually envision programs like this program that we're working on in Lebanon, where over the coming 10 years, we want to help with the ecosystem, provide a high quality entrepreneurial experience to every young person every year of their academic career? Or can we actually envision programs like this, where within 10 years in the Middle East, we want to support one million women-led enterprises, not trainees, but actual functioning enterprises. And through this kind of approach, we think that we can actually work to address these, and then collectively, we can work to build this sort of community of innovators and entrepreneurs to, that, that truly represents the beauty of the diversity of our world and it helps us build a brighter future that we all want to live in. Thank you.